So for this week's challenge, we are updating our workflow that we built for last week um, because there is a bank holiday that we missed out from the data. So if we look at, this is just last week's workflow. Um, so I take a look here. Um, I've just changed my cake date from the summary view to the detail view, scroll down so that I can find the offending date, which is the 5th of May 2025, where we can see that we've got three cakes that are being given out on that day. But actually, no children will be in school. It is a public holiday on that day. So we need to roll these cakes back to uh, the previous week. So I just need to bring in my new data set. So I'm going to um, go and find that. I know it's a text file. Um, I will see that it is here luckily just sat there it's being brought in as an input step I can see that I've got my spring bank holiday no I don't it's my early May bank holiday that I care about here um, the Monday the 5th of May and that's the one that I want to go and make sure that we are now taking into consideration this flow um, and so I can just drag this input step on top of my input step before for the 20, 24 week 33 input to replace that um, and now ooh, what's happening so I'm having a couple of alerts come in um, I'm not including the source row number in uh, this input step where I've replaced it so I just need to make sure that I go and include that field um, nice helpful alert that came up there to <laughs> let me know that I need to do that um, and let's see let's just go and see what happens um, just from making that change. Um, see if it's kind of fixed our issues, if there's more that we need to do. Okay, there's definitely, certainly more that we need to do because we still have three cakes coming in on the uh, 5th of May. So just by replacing the input hasn't quite fixed it. And that's because that holiday is in the middle of term time. And so it's not kind of working by the same rules as every other, ho other holiday. So if you remember, if I come uh, to this step here uh, where we have updated our flow to have the last Friday there and that kind of covers say if we've got the autumn term one and then the autumn half term um, then we see that the last Friday before that autumn half term is the 25th of October um, and so we can kind of roll anything in the October half term back to that last Friday there um, whereas for our early May bank holiday um, we can see that actually the last Friday is occurring way after on the 23rd of May. Um, and so that's not quite what we want um, to be happening. We don't want to move any of those um, early May bank holiday through to the 23rd of May. And actually, if we check in our join as well there, um, then we can see that um, we are actually having three extra rows coming through in our join now as well. So if we go and find um, that May bank holiday um, that's causing us those issues, so the early May bank holiday there, um, we can see that we're getting the three rows coming through for that. Um, but then any of the cake days that are on the 5th of May as well, let's go find those. They're actually being duplicated here. They're being counted in the summer term and as the May Bank, early May Bank holiday. So we've got some issue with duplication here too. So we need to make sure that we deal with all of these basically. So first port of call, we can um, basically we need to update this last Friday field for our early May bank holiday. So the logic that we can use here is we can uh, look at the end date that we have and we can see well if the end date comes before that last Friday that we've already got then we want to update it so that we're pushing that end date back to the Friday before it. So let's create a calculated field to update that last Friday field and we're going to say if that end date is before that last Friday at the moment which it is for our own, our only for our uh, early May bank holiday. Um, then we're going to do a little date add. So I always like to wrap my date add in a date function because otherwise it comes out as a date time and then I just have to change it afterwards. So I'll just uh, make it a date um, by wrapping in date there. So we're just going to take away three days from that Monday to make it into a Friday basically um, from that end date that we have there. Um, Else we're going to leave it alone. The last Friday is good for all the other um, holidays that we've got there. So 
that's all good. So now we see if that's worked. Um, we can see that we've got this new date in there. So now our early May bank holiday, our last Friday is now going to be um, the Friday before it instead of the end of term, like every other one is. Has that fixed our join? Um, well, let's go and see. Let's go and find that 5th of May. No, it hasn't fixed the duplication because our uh, join isn't acting on that last Friday um, field at all. Um, so we didn't really expect that to update it. But as you're kind of building through, you kind of keep checking, don't you? And be like, how much more work do I need to do? How much uh, do I need to fix? So um, I will add in another clean step here to, in order to fix that duplication. So let's just, um, I'm going to call this something like deduplication. I could use um, the identify duplicate rows maybe, maybe that might help me out here. I might actually try that. It's not something that I've tried um, with this instance. So I see that all my rows are unique, but I know that's not quite true. So let's go and edit this um, and specify what I want to be unique. So I want uh, the cake day to be unique for sure. Um, but then I want for each ID. So for each ID and cake, cake day. Let's see what that returns for us. Um, see if that's enough. Um, so I'm just updating this so that I've got cake day, comma ID. Let's see if that's enough. So there we go. This actually identifies uh, the three duplicate rows. But it's not really doing it in a way that's helpful to us because you can see that some of the duplicate rows being identified are based on the term and some are based on the bank holiday. So some of them are being assigned the summer term, some of them are being um, assigned the early May bank holiday. We want them all to be falling under that early Monday bank holiday so we can roll them back to that last Friday. So we don't want any to be assigned to the summer term. So that's, it's almost right. Um, and I wonder if there's anything that we can do to fix it so that it does become. Um, so if we added in something like the term or if we added in um, say the last Friday, I don't think that would help because then the rows would then be unique again. Uh, so actually I'm not sure it's something we can do with the duplicate row function. That's not where my mind went to try it um, for sure. Um, so I saw that it's ordering it by the cake day. What if we got it to order by the last Friday instead? Could that help? Let's try that. Let's get it to order by the last Friday rather than the cake day field. Let's save that. Let's see what the duplicate. So now the duplicates are all being assigned as the um, early May bank holiday. So we just want the reverse logic of that. So we'll just do that in ascending order rather than in descending order. And then I think that's going to identify those duplicate rows for us. So we change that to ascending and we save that. And now the duplicates, yes, they're all the ones that are within term time. They would then push that cake day all the way to the end of term, which we don't want. We want the cake day to be assigned to the Friday before that bank holiday Monday instead. So we can just exclude these duplicates. So we go ahead and exclude those. We can exclude this field as well, remove that field. And now we've got back to our 998 rows, which is great. So the rest of our flow should work as we expect. So let's see for that cake day move. Um, do we have the 5th of May in there anymore? Um, or has it all been rolled back to the 2nd of May? Let's go see. Uh, there we go, the 5th of May has disappeared. We now have more rows for the 2nd of May. Um, so that's brilliant. We can see those early May bank holiday one, two, three rows have been now rolled back to the 2nd of May. Awesome. So the rest of the flow should work out. We shouldn't need to touch any of that now. We've got our 185 rows where we've removed that 5th of May um, and it's all working nicely for us. So brilliant. When I solved the challenge initially myself, I didn't use this uh, duplicate row functionality, but I thought it'd be fun to play around with um, to see if I could get it working. Um, I used before I used the logic around um, this term field. So saying that for each cake day will take the minimum term, so the zero of whether it's a term or not, um, because it's a holiday. So only keep those rows and filter the data based on that. But that's more complicated to explain. So um, I thought I'd try the duplicate row. 
and it it did work so that's good discovery i hope you enjoyed um continuing to work on this challenge don't worry there isn't a part four coming um but thank you very much for watching <laughs>